Uh, now I'm delighted to introduce to the show, carrying on nicely from our theme of Western civilization, uh, David Adler. Welcome back to Outsiders. How are you, David? Uh, thank you, Rowan. And I, I have to point out <laughs> that there was a predecessor to the oh, yes. ideology that... Uh, well, let me just introduce you properly <laughs> as the, as the um, uh, head of the Australian Jewish Association. <laughs> Tell us who this predecessor was. Well, <laughs> from, from Abraham to Moses, there's a whole uh, culture that is also part of the foundation of Western civilization. Oh, yes. You might have heard of the Ten Commandments, for yes, example. absolutely. Yes. Um, the first documented... Uh, moral, ethical, so how, legal so code. John was kind of uh, painting the portrait of Jesus that from all different ideologies or walks of life that he's respected. What's, I, I'm sure there are many different ones, but what's the broader Jewish attitude to Jesus mm. these days? I mean, let's not forget that the Jews suffered under the Catholics uh, and yeah. from, through, from Christians uh, horribly over the centuries. Well, let, uh, so let me, what's the, let but that's not Jesus' way. fault, obviously. Let me, let me, let me put it this way. If, if somehow you, you brought him back today mm. um, and he walked around, he would look for a kosher place to us. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, he, would, he, he, was, he was Jewish. Absolutely. It was only afterwards, after, he, after his death sometime, that mm. um, other, other teachings grew from some of the things he said. And some of the things he said were good. We don't attribute the same status mm. that uh, Christianity attributes to him. But, you know, there's a... We always refer to Judeo-Christian culture as a combination that is the foundation of Western civilization. Fantastic. Now, you have a exclusive Outsiders oh. exclusive for us, David. Let's kick off with this Look, one. This outsiders is, will be hopefully horrified as I was to hear this news this is, from this David this evening. Uh, a privilege to do a bit of Outsiders breaking news. <laughs> and You've done it once or twice, David. Let's not forget. The, um, everyone will know that the Time magazine uh, nominates each year a person of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, slightly less well known is that the Financial Times in the UK also does it. And we can break for in Australian television news here tonight that the 2018 person of the year for the Financial Times is George Soros. Oh, oh really? Oh, Jesus. Um, John Ruddock, response it's, to this news? Well, well OK. I don't know that much about the Financial Times. Is it, so it's obviously a financial paper, but is it pretty <laughs> no, it's left, left wing? It's pink. It's it, pink literally okay. in, in name and, and in nature. Yeah, OK, uh, very good. Okay. But it used to be, of course, a bas like all these, many of yes. uh, these sorts of newspapers has drifted to the left, like The Economist itself. Okay. Salvatore, comment? Oh, you know, George Soros, I, I'm, I know what he's done in his life, but I'm not sure that he's done much this year. I'm trying to figure out what the announcement is, is even in honour of. Well, because that, he found a get-up to our viewers, he found a get-up, he's behind all these different uh, trolling kind of... Well, he hasn't, he hasn't on, done uh, the work, he's provided the money. Those are two different things. And that's absolutely right. Now, David, the main reason you're here, of course, is that the Labor Party and their conference, uh, which, I mean, the, if you read in today's Australian, or uh, yeah, this morning's Australian, the list of things from from the Labor Party conference, Liberal Party, if you want a, uh, your entire platform is there, all you have to do is read out that list of Labor promises every day for the next five months and you will win in a landslide if only people know what Labor have in store for them. Uh, David, one of those things you were fairly appalled by, talk us through it. Well, the main thing that uh, concerned us uh, was that the Labor Party has resolved, moved by Penny Wong, who's the shadow uh, foreign minister, so it's it's not moved by a by a trivial union hack. Right. It, this has gravitas in the Labor Party to recognise a non-existent state of Palestine. Now, for anyone who is aware of the um, the facts on the ground, if this comes into being any time soon, the reality of what would be created is another uh, Islamic terrorist state. One of the things that the Labor Party did not comment on, and they really have to be pinned down on this, is who are they proposing would govern this entity? Because really at the moment there are two main powers. You've got Hamas, which is a proscribed terrorist organisation in many countries in the world, um, you know, spends most of its money 
on rockets and on terror tunnels, yep. um, encouraging people to be suicide bombers. For, fortunately, that's been controlled in, in recent years. And clearly an Islamic, based on Islamic State-style tactics, Absolutely. or they're, they're great friends of Islamic State, uh, Hamas are. And then you've got the Palestinian Authority, which is only just one step removed. We know that in its current budget, it has increased the spending on its Pay for Slay program and its Martyrs Fund. And, and of course, I'll just remind viewers that it was largely David Adler who, uh, through Outsiders and also through The Spectator magazine, that encouraged um, Julie Bishop when she was a foreign to, minister and other work from other senators as well to questions asked in, in, um, in Parliament. Uh, Senator Fraser Anning, I believe, Senator Pauline Hanson, others asked questions in, in, in the Senate, which got Julie Bishop to at least remove some of the money of Australian taxpayers' dollars going to Hamas. So well yeah. done, David, on and that. Senator job. Erica Betts and Senator David yes. Lallenholm have been uh, drilling questions in Senate estimates, which has been really good. But the, the governing party is Fatah, and they uh, recently publicised, just to give you an example of the type of behaviour, um, they had a poster which uh, glorified the uh, terrorists who were responsible for the murder of mothers recently. Oh, um, the two that were uh, caught up by the IDF and uh, killed in a shootout, one of them tied a young mother to the chair. She pleaded for her life, according to witnesses, because she's got a young child, but she was shot. The second uh, one who's on that poster um, recently um, shot a pregnant woman, 30 weeks pregnant, who was standing uh, at a bus stop, shot her in the abdomen. They did an emergency um, C-section to remove the baby. Um, unfortunately, the baby died a few days later. And this behaviour is being celebrated uh, by Hamas. It's being financially rewarded by the Palestinian Authority. And this is what the Labor Party is getting behind when it's recognising that these people are indeed a state. And you mentioned Penny, was it Penny Wong who's, yeah. who's said that they, Labor will restore funding? So I just mentioned Julie Bishop removing funding. Had the Labor Party said they will restore or increase the funding there to a, UNHRC, I believe, um, or the refugees? UNRWA. 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 The, okay. um, so tell us about that. Absolutely. This is uh, um, the opposite of what the US is doing, the opposite of what even some European countries are doing because they recognise UNRWA is the body that is responsible for the schools yes. um, in Gaza and in Judea and Samaria, or some call it the West Bank. Which we've shown on this show is basically Her horrific, terrorizing, horrific material. Training children to be terrorists. In, indeed. Um, a lot of incitement. In fact, one of the reasons why um, the two-state solution is an oxymoron is because we have had now two generations that have been educated in hatred. Mm. Financed by, yeah. often, the and West. The, the Labor Party, in, a, in another resolution at its um, national conference in Adelaide, has said that it will increase by $20 million the funding for UNRWA to part make up the uh, shortfall as a result of President Trump remo removing some funding. And undoing much of the great work you've done. Or, yes. well, or undoing yeah. a lot of the great work you've it's, done. It's, Extraordinary. It's, a, it's a dreadful situation. I mean, what we are investing in is, frankly, we are not investing in peace. We are investing in terrorism. Now, the, I know you've had a lot of discussions about foreign aid generally, and you can find lots of examples in foreign aid that is wasteful or um, dissipated in a corrupt manner. But this is the worst of the worst of our foreign aid. It actually does harm. Mm. Uh, David, can I, can I ask, um, uh, left-wing countries in the West have in the last two decades moved to a fairly radical position mm. in relation to the Palestinians. But am I correct in thinking at the same time, a lot of the other countries in the Middle East, like Saudi Arabia and some of those right. Gulf states and Egypt, uh, who used to go to war against Israel in trying to build a Palestinian state, uh, and there hasn't been any war like that since the 70s. Um, am I correct in thinking that they have also like seriously cut back on their aid funding? So while we're increasing our aid funding, Saudi places like Saudi Arabia are reducing it? Oh, well, the, paradoxically, the, um, the Arab states gave very little uh, in, in money, a couple, couple of exceptions, but 
um, what we have seen, uh, consistent with what you're raising, John, is quietly building diplomatic relations between uh, the Gulf states in particular uh, and Israel. It was really interesting that when uh, uh, Prime Minister Morrison announced that he would do a part recognition of Jerusalem. Yes. Um, very yes. quickly, we've only got capital. 30 seconds left. Just tell us what you make of that uh, um, decision. Well, you need to understand what a divided Jerusalem looks like. And in its 3,000 year history, it has only ever been divided for 19 years when Jordan illegally occupied the eastern side from 48 to 67. And there's an illustration of what that means, what the uh, Jerusalem effect of the Jordan Arabs. Okay, I'll tell you what, we'll take a break. We'll come back, David, and we'll follow on with this because it's an interesting thought. We're going to be back with a little bit more with David and some lefty lunacy, which probably fits in, <laughs> back in a tick. Good evening. You're watching Outsiders, and thank you so much for watching Outsiders. It's been so good having you watching us throughout the year. We've got one more show tomorrow night at 11 p.m., and I want to see you there. You too, you too as well, you over there as well. Um, but we're talking to John Ruddick, we're talking to Salvatore Babones, and we are talking to David Adler, who's telling us about Scott Morrison's bizarre decision to go in on and split Jerusalem in half. Tell us about it, David. Well, people need to understand that it's not all that long ago that it was sort of tried. Uh, in 1948, at the end of the War of Independence of Israel, until 1967, there was a 19-year period out of 3,000 years where there was an aberration and Jordan illegally occupied the eastern side of Jerusalem. Now, we need to understand what happened during that time. And what happened during that time is that there was ethnic cleansing of the Jewish quarter of the old city. Um, most of the synagogues were destroyed or desecrated. Um, there was complete apartheid. Um, Jews were prevented even from going to the Western Wall to pray. So. If you're advocating a split of Jerusalem, um, it's been done. It is a total failure. Uh, the only administration which has provided uh, freedom of movement and religious freedom in uh, the modern era is when it's under Israeli administration. Salvatore? David, as an American living in Australia the last mm. 10 years, I've been really shocked by the level of just everyday casual anti-Semitism in Australia. Uh, I'm wondering what your experience of that has been. Um, well, it's certainly been uh, on the increase in the last decade, uh, particularly on university campuses and on social media. That's where we right. see it uh, most. Fortunately, we don't have a large number of uh, violent incidents and it comes from uh, the Islamic extremists, particularly on the university campuses and on social media. Um, there is a, a, a small rump group on the far right uh, which puts up posters and things and there's this unholy marriage uh, mm -hmm. between the, uh, the leftists and Islam. The green, hard green left uh, in bed with the Islamists, which we talked a lot about on this show. Salvatore, you're in the hotbed of anti-Semitism <laughs> being at Sydney University. I'm sorry, Sydney University, but mm. you have to accept that that's a reality. Now, speaking of which, that leads us into some lefty lunacy.